I was 15, I started to lose my hearing from a neurological disease passed down from my father. And I was very discouraged during that time. A family friend gave me the verse Proverbs 31, 25 one night. I knew I had probably read it before, but that night it really jumped out to me because I was in a new set of circumstances. I was not laughing at the days to come. I was crying when I thought of the days to come because it looked as though the hearing loss would be progressive and it was likely that I would eventually lose it all. So when I looked to the future, I was very discouraged and I loved the vision of this woman who was able to look to the future, all of the unknowns, the trials that she wouldn't know until they came. And she was able to think about those things and just laugh. And I loved that vision and it stuck with me for the whole time I was losing my hearing. And during my 20s, that was a decade of a lot of disappointment and loss. I did end up losing all of my hearing from the disease. It was very progressive. It came to a point where it was entirely gone. And during that time, I still had that vision of this woman in my mind, and I wanted that laughter. But the only thing I could envision for my future was being healed. I really believed that that's what God wanted to do. I became absolutely certain that he wanted to heal me. And so that was the only thing that I could really envision for the future. Uh, but God, instead of healing me, he very graciously and gently corrected my theology and he showed me his fatherly sovereignty. He showed me the nature of our salvation, that it is a now and not yet salvation. And these things were very life-changing for me. And so I still had uh, this vision in my mind of the woman who laughed at the days to come. And uh, years before that, when I had just started to lose my hearing, and I got this verse, after this friend had given me the verse, one night while I was lying in bed, I thought of the title, Laughing at the Days to Come, and I thought how neat it would be to write a book based on this woman's laughter, and it stuck with me all those years, and I really just wanted to put into words the lessons that God had taught me about His fatherly sovereignty in our trials, and how knowing those truths about him helped us to cultivate a life of laughter.